Hi everyone, my name is Manala and you can catch me on Tweak India. Can Malala ever be a normal student? Do people let you be normal? Becoming kind of well known at a very young age was challenging. I did not really have anyone to guide me as well. So I had to learn everything myself. I was not like a, you know, like a TV celebrity. I was not like a TV actress. So like even the fame and the support I was getting was quite different. It was like, you know, Malala, you are an inspiration to us. We admire you. So for me, it was like, you know, thank you so much for your support and thank you for standing up with me. And uh, if they would ask for a picture, yes, of course, why not? It's slightly different. So I don't, I did not ever treat it as like a celebrity fame or anything like that. But in college, I was a bit uh, worried, overwhelmed how it was going to be. And, uh, but, you know, in the end, it was fine in Oxford. I'm sure they have like, you know, uh, celebrity students all before as well. Are you a good student? You look like you're a good student. You've always <laughs> been like, a good student. Yeah, I think that's, like that's a very positive thing to hear. <laughs> that's, why, that's how I want to keep it. And I'm sure my parents also think I'm a good student. We have three semesters and one semester is eight weeks long. And uh, in our second and third year, we have like uh, 16 essays in just one semester. So like that's two essays a week and there's, there's a lot of reading to do. And there's just so much work to do. So you have to like balance it out because you also want to have fun. And if you do yeah, not that's have- That's my next fun. question. What does Malala do for fun? What uh, do you do for fun? Do you like just uh, ever sit and watch shows all weekend? Do you eat only dessert for, you know, the weekend? What do you do? For me, fun means spending time with friends whether that's going to a restaurant and having lunch together, whether it's going to a movie or something. And also there are lots of like societies in Oxford. So I sometimes go like to cricket club. And uh, so I have played like once or twice for my college as well. When you were a little girl at the time when the only thing you have to worry about is a teacher writing complaints to your parents, you were getting horrific death threats. What was that like to get death threats at 14 and 15? It was announced on the FM radio by the Taliban spokesperson that uh, from the 15th of January 2009, no girl can go out, can go, can go to school. How and old were you then? I was 11. It was, it was a shutdown on school because they did not believe in the uh, in the rights of women they did not believe in the education of girls for a woman not to be able to go to get her uh, education means that she's more vulnerable to be getting married at an early age she's vulnerable to sexual abuse or domestic violence she's more vulnerable to becoming a mother while she's still at her teenage while she herself is a child yes. uh, and her dreams are taken away f f from her and for me like that life was you know was the worst I that imagine. i could ever imagine so that's why, you know, I started speaking out uh, for my right to go to school and for the rights of all girls in Swat Valley. You started writing a blog also at that point anonymously for the BBC. Yes. Did you at that point, and I think it was your father who encouraged you mm -hmm. to do that. Did you at any point realize the risk that you were taking while doing that? Uh, to be honest, no, because we were all living in a risk we were all living in a conflict and I think it's, it's hard to like explain it that you know every night when I was sleeping I was sleeping in fear because that you know the Taliban can knock on your door and just get into the house and like kill anyone and that's what they were doing there if we did not speak out nothing was going to change and we were uh, we would have been living in that situation forever for a 12 year old girl 11 year old girl to come to this realization that I need to speak up for everyone not just me it's a quantum leap so there has to be someone in your life who really guided you towards that space my father was my inspiration he had five sisters and none of them could go to school so he believed that education is empowerment for women like a feminist in action <laughs> like a feminist man in action yeah. elderly people are talking in a family usually nobody would listen to it to a child and like he yeah, would always and a like, girl you know, at that yeah he would pay full attention tell everybody keep quiet because the child is speaking right now the role of men is is crucial in this because you know that's where the problem lies yeah. in the end i think he's spreading the message that giving them an education because you help her but you also help the the whole community on the day that you were attacked what was it like? It was a normal day. You got up, you were in a school bus going to school? Yes. The bus started, the school bus started driving. Then I don't remember anything. Oh my God. The next thing I remember is waking up in a hospital in the UK, in Birmingham. But what my friends have told me is that the school bus was stopped by two boys and one was talking to the bus driver at the front and one came to the back. 
and uh, he said who's malala most of the girls were covering their faces but i i was not covering my face mm -hmm. and some girls like looked at me because they were like surprised like like what is happening as soon as kind of he figured out uh, he fired uh, a few bullets and one of the bullets hit me uh, kind of on the left side of my forehead and then i oh got two bullets hit my friends who were sitting next to me and uh, I asked my best friend Muniba. She was like my school friend, and I asked her, "Like, you know, what did I do? Did I scream? Or did I say anything?" And she said, "Like, no." She said, "Like, you were just like looking at the guy. You were just staring at him, and you were holding my hand so tight that I could feel the pain for weeks." And she said that uh, as soon as like you know he he fired the bullets, you fell in my lap. So I think you know. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> And these that's, are like for me it's, it's just horrific. a story about like you know this oh. girl malala for me it's so hard to relate to it because i do not remember and i think it's good that i don't remember so this horrific thing happens to you and after that did you ever think that you know i've done my share i've literally faced bullets and now somebody else has to go on with this work i'm done or i really don't want to go on Uh, and this i mean you were in coma for a week after that i did not know what was happening outside the nurses they showed me like they they brought this kind of basket of cards and letters and i was like like so people know that something yeah. has happened to me and like they're writing me cards and like there's a card from japan and india and mexico and america like i said like what is happening and then i realized that wow like i have received this global support so uh, much love from all over the world all over the world i realized that you know now i have the opportunity to highlight the issue of girls education globally we so uh, together with the world bank malala fund we did this research and it shows that if we educate all girls and give them 12 years of education that adds up to 30 trillion dollars to the global economy exactly. we need to remind world leaders again and again that when you invest in girls education you know that's the most sustainable economic investment that you can ever do you have no problem in reminding world leaders about anything you will go to obama and tell talk to him about drones you don't mm -hmm. seem intimidated by anybody people are intimidated by you. you are world leaders intimidated by the nobel prize winning malala not sure <laughs> uh, but i think all i know is that when i go and meet them i will highlight the issues that girls are facing i will make clear what my stance is on these different issues from drone attacks to women's rights and it has been challenging because uh, you know some world leaders are then not willing to meet you <laughs> okay because uh, of you know what you say to them and how you challenge them you won the nobel peace prize you were nominated first and then you won where were you how did you find out that you won the nobel peace prize the year in which it was like really like all over the media and there were petitions and like that was in 2013 and i did not win that year and i was not expecting it to win that year then the next year in 2014 uh like that kind of news and everything had gone down and like my dad was a bit like maybe it could happen so but i said no 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 i'm going to school so i went to school i was in my chemistry lesson and then uh, one of my school's uh, deputy head teacher she came into the class and she she like she calls you when you are in trouble okay. so i was like like you know what have what i have done I, yeah yeah and so she took me outside and she said like malala you have won the nobel peace prize and i said Wow and I was like thank you like I you just do not know how to respond to your teachers yeah. the school principal they called an assembly and uh, that was the first time I spoke in my school I was really nervous and then I went back to my physics class and uh, I said I have to finish my school day I cannot leave the school so finish my whole school day and then uh, after that we did a press conference I think for me like winning the Nobel Peace Prize together with Kailash Satyarthi from India who has worked for children in forced labor and uh, children in slavery for for his whole life it was it was a great moment because we both felt that it was given to children that year it yeah. was given to the issues that children and young girls and boys are facing all over the world It's being a student doing your activism writing books you mm -hmm. just wrote we are displaced how do you manage i mean literally time management how does that work it is hard uh, i'll be honest um it is very difficult i am clear in a few things one is that when i am in school then i have to be in school and like you know no travel uh, nothing during that time but as soon as i get a break then you know i start traveling and uh, whether that's you know going to the to the g7 summit or g20 and uh, going to ethiopia and nigeria uh, kenya and uh, lebanon to highlight the issues and that girls are facing listening yeah. to their stories meeting them 
uh, and also uh, you know starting our projects in those places supporting the local activists who are focusing on girls education uh, and who are doing advocacy for girls education there nationally as well who want the world to be a better place and like sometime are not optimistic that you know nothing is happening and things are getting worse you know things are getting worse in some places but it's always it's also important for us to remember you know what things were like 50 years ago a century ago and how much has changed so things are changing rapidly yeah. and just seeing how much we have achieved in terms of progress uh, for human development we still have a lot to do but more and more children are getting educated and women's health is improving and yes. you know life uh, expectancy is increasing as well thank you malala yeah thank, thank you so you. much